and I'm going to call them the organizational and psychological benefits of using this workflow timeline. So first of all, you can bring all of your productivity knowledge with you into the system, whether you're a GTD fan, Kanban, Para, however you organize your stuff. And uh, the more knowledge you do bring into this, the more you'll appreciate the system. The second point is that this workflow timeline can handle everything that you throw at it, everything that you've got juggling up in the air, your to-dos. So uh, projects, tasks, recurring reminders, events, backlogs, life areas, goals, etc. cetera. Uh, we're gonna take a look at all of those in due course. So you can have everything in Workflowy in one place. A third point is that nothing falls through the cracks. Fourth point is that it reduces admin. It takes just a few minutes at the end of the day, maybe two minutes max for me, maybe three, four for other people to organize your life for the next day. And that is it. Fifth point, it reduces and eliminates anxiety. That's a nice one to talk about. I've been hearing back from a lot of my coaching clients, and this is a huge plus. Number six, it significantly reduces distractions. We're going to look at that. And seven important things in life don't get left behind. Often we get to the doing and we get to the, into this productivity mindset. Let's be productive. Let's do, do, do. But often the important things in life fall by the wayside. They get overlooked, unfortunately. And this system takes care of that. It helps you to remember those important things in life. And number eight, it's an intuitive way to prioritize. We're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about prioritization on this timeline and how it's intuitive and how it does away with other prioritization methods. Let me give you a quick couple of minute um, run through of my timeline system so you can visually see it. All I see is what I want to see. On my homepage, I have two top level lists and this whole thing just is my workflow timeline. This very top outline here, it shows me what I have up next. At 2 p.m. I've got this workflow webinar um the timeline if i expand that that's got the rest of my workflow in it and then i've got things from three four five six seven eight i work on the 100 hour scheme that's nice i like that so let me jump to my calendar quickly if we start from the top you just see the month of may let me collapse that let me collapse the month of june and that's it down here i have just a placeholder for July, August, September, October. A couple of birthdays, public holidays, whatnot. Nothing interesting to see there. And then I have this template so that I never have to write out on Monday the 1st, Tuesday the 2nd, Wednesday the 3rd. You've probably all seen that. So, for instance, if I wanted the month of July, I would copy the first day of July is a Sunday. So I'm going to copy that. And... I'm just going to paste it here. And let me just give that a nice pretty color. And if I expand this, oh, let me just change this to July. And I have, I'm going to share this template with you. I have a list of days and dates for July, but I don't need that. I'm going to go ahead and delete. I just need at least the next two months up. All right, so that's my system. Most of you have seen it before, especially if you've read the book on journaling. I give a quick walkthrough. Next day up is tomorrow, Friday the 26th. This is just simply a holding bucket for the things that I would like to do tomorrow, the things that are scheduled, the things that I plan to do, intend to do, etc. So my workflow goes something like this. Back to my homepage. I'm going to go into full screen mode here. As I'm done, um, the workflow timeline, I would probably just archive that. I have things like lunch. Uh, later up today, I'm taking my daughter to swimming. Uh, I've got to work on some workflow tickets. I'm going to take my older daughter to volleyball, etc. Once those items are done, I simply open up the left bar and I push them to the next logical date. When do they reoccur? So, for instance, um, tomorrow is Friday. After my daughter has done her volleyball session, I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna pop this into Friday because this item reoccurs every Friday. And what I do as the day goes by, I delete the hours until I get to the end of the day. And then I just copy a new set of time blocks for the next day. And then I paste them 
back up above here so that I have a new pretty set of time blocks. And then once that's done, I'm ready to populate for the next day. So I jump into my calendar and I'll begin to drag and drop. There's different ways to move stuff in Workflowy. This is one of them. Super easy, just drag and drop for the next bucket up from Friday. All these items, time sensitive, day sensitive, um, and then there's a mix of things that I'd like to do. So I drag and drop them one by one into my time slots for the next day. So that is the basic workflow. Okie dokie. So let's get back to the organizational and psychological benefits of using this timeline. It looks simple, but it's not simplistic. There's layer upon layer of productivity and psychology that you can bring in. This gives you unprecedented flexibility for stuff like Kanban, and we're going to look at that quickly. If you've got too much on your plate and you've got too much in these time blocks, let me jump back to my... Okay, let's say I've, I'm a task master. I've set aside one, two, three, four time blocks for writing. I'm busy writing this book, How to Stop Binge Watching and Start Living. Let's say that's too much. I'm going to take these because maybe today's a full day. And maybe after an evening out with my wife, I'm not going to get to that. And so I will just pop them into the next day up. Likewise, with anything that becomes too much. So that's just a quick uh, glimpse of the idea of pushing when you've got too much on your plate. Let me jump on to the next point. We're going to look at projects and how you put projects on this timeline. Like move the whole bang shoot, the whole project into your timeline. So here we go. Like I said, you can handle workflowy timeline, can handle projects, tasks, reoccurring reminders, events, backlogs, life areas. Let's get into the, the nitty gritty. First of all, projects. There's different kinds of projects. I get asked about this a lot when I'm coaching folk. Uh, you get projects that are linear. So let me give you an example of a linear project of mine. Uh, typically, that would be for me, um, book writing. Here's this outline, how to stop binge watching and start living. I need another three weeks or so to finish this off. All I do when I'm ready to write is I jump into this outline and I continue. I pick up where I left off. So it's linear. I've got no complicated, multifaceted things that I need to bring out into my timeline because there's different dates for each. So I just typically set aside two to four hours a day to write whatever I'm writing on. And it's linear. Let's jump back to where I was. Another type of project might be nonlinear in the sense that you've got a bunch of due dates in there, time sensitive things. Let me give you an example of that. Let me jump to the coaching outline since that's what a lot of you folk have heard of. I've got a list of to do's, which most of it is done because I'm just getting on with the business of coaching these clients. So you will see several clients in that outline and this is a legitimate project called coaching. Now, I'm not going to put coaching into the outline. It might sit just below the timeline. And what I will do is mirror into my timeline, my calendar, all those items, those events of my clients. So let's take a quick look at Kevin. The 16th of June, it's mirrored into my timeline. So if I tap on these three dots here, and I see where the other mirror is, you can see that it's somewhere, here's the original in my project outline, right? Clients, scheduled, June. But I also have this in my tickler file under June the 16th. If I jump to June the 16th, you see Kevin there. And if I jump back here, I've got a little link, just an illustrative thing. I'm gonna filter everything in my calendar for the clients that I have up, the coaching clients for the rest of May, and then going to June. This will populate a little bit more as more folks start to sign up for this, these coaching sessions. All right, so that's an example of a project where sensitive stuff needs to come out. And what I would do is mirror that into the timeline. So nothing is escaping the timeline. Let me jump to the next thing up, tasks. You have time-sensitive tasks as well as date sensitive. So example, this webinar, it's time sensitive, 2 p.m. my time in the Northeast of Brazil. Swimming, my older daughter, my younger daughter, uh, 20 to four every Thursday. And every Thursday at six o'clock more or less, 
plan something with my wife and go watch a movie, etc. And then a couple of things I'd like to do. So let me jump to my calendar right at the top. You'll see that tomorrow I've got a bunch of things planned. They're time sensitive. Um, schedule volleyball class and then take my daughter to volleyball, the older one. Uh, I might do a workout in the morning with my wife. Take my younger daughter to school for the usual things of life. My older daughter does homeschooling, um, so she's got a guitar class, et cetera, et cetera. These are time and day sensitive. Um, and then a couple of bills to pay. I might want to remind myself, do I actually want to stick with Amazon Prime? I do because the shipping's fast. So there's some examples of tasks that you can pull in. So we've looked at projects. We've looked at tasks. How about recurring tasks? What is the workflow for recurring stuff? Because a lot of people, I get a lot of people asking about how do you deal with recurring things, recurring reminders? Can we not have a feature that reschedules? There's different ways to do that. You can slap a workflowy date tag on it. That's the solution. That's one way of doing it. And then if the item changes date, which it is inevitably going to, you're going to have to reschedule it for next week, same time, or next month, same time. You're going to have to change the time, the date on it with Workflow's feature, their date stamp. But what I do is because this is fully manual, super intuitive, let me give you an example of what I do once something has expired, it's done. This item here, let's say it's on my time blocks for the next day. Actually, let me just jump to my home page where my tasks are. So swimming, this reoccurs every Thursday. Once this is done, I'm actually gonna pop this to next Thursday in my timeline. So Manuela swimming to the next Thursday and boom, there it goes. Now, let me just undo that. If I jump to my calendar, just to give you some examples of things that reoccur, um, the nitty gritty here. Let's go to next Thursday, for instance. I know that every Thursday, um, I got a workflow meeting. I got two workflow meetings lined up for Thursdays. And what I'll do, I'll just push them to the next Thursday after that. And that's the way they reoccur. And nothing complicated, no rocket science here. That's the logical thing that you do if you had a system like this. And so what you're doing, this whole exercise is pushing from the current time block or the current day back into your timeline. You keep recycling and reusing. And I'll give you an excellent reason to do this. A lot of folk ask me, well, Frank, why don't you just have that in Google Calendar? You can see it repeating every single week into infinity. Just go into your calendar, whether it's Outlook, Apple Calendar, Google Calendar, you can just see those things reoccurring. Let me give you a couple of good reasons. Well, let me demonstrate this for you. My daughter is going to have her guitar class uh, tomorrow at some point. Where is that? Right here. Let me zoom into there. She's been going for a couple of years, and I have a record of all the classes she's done. There's some other material in there too. I can also keep track of, um, I pay in a cycle of eight classes and she the next class up will be tomorrow. And that's gonna be the fifth in a cycle of eight classes. A good reason to have an event in Workflow because suddenly what would just be a one-liner can now become a full-on project. It can have reference material in there, et cetera. Another example is for instance, my daughter's volleyball. That seems simple enough. It is, but from Monday to Friday, there are different times for different reasons. So we schedule on an app and she's got to schedule an hour before. So that's a bit of coordination. It requires that, but all the info I used to have in a PDF that the gym had sent us, but now I've got it in Workflowy. And you could conceivably have that, let's say in your Google calendar or something like that, but that's just an idea. You can actually have meeting notes. Let's say you have a meeting scheduled every Tuesday at 5 p.m. or whatever time it is, you can legitimately have meeting notes, reference material, all kinds of things. So that's an excellent reason to have events, even repeating events or once-off events in your workflow timeline because suddenly you get to save information, bits and pieces, things that you'd like to have in there for keepsakes or for practical purposes. All right, so we've talked about recurring events, calendar events, backlogs. I love this part. How about having a backlog in your calendar? Let me give you an example of something that I have, three items that I look at every Saturday right here. 
You might be thinking, well, Frank, you got to scroll down your timeline to go and find this stuff. No, I don't. It will stream towards me one day at a time. These three things that I wanted to look at, let me just indent them here under this um, separator so we can focus on them. Zoom in a tad bit. I have what I call a forward log. That is just a backlog turned on its head. How wonderful is it psychologically to think I've got nothing behind me, like backlog. I'm like falling behind. I got all the stuff I need to catch up on. I call it a forward log. And it's the stuff that I get to every Saturday. I have this amazing opportunity to quickly expand, zoom into there and see, is there anything I want to pull out of these outlines for Frank, my wife, uh, the family, father-in-law, dogs, etc. a bunch of to-dos. And what you will find with the system is if you schedule it at some point in your timeline, at some sort of frequency, I like to look at it every weekend. That's what this WE is. That gives me an opportunity to look at it every single weekend. If I don't have enough time, I will push it forward to Sunday. If I don't have time this weekend, not a problem. I'll push it forward to next week. I'm not going to stress myself out and bite off more than I can chew. So I have this forward log, which has the typical backlog items that most of us have. I also have an item for reflecting. I might have goals and dreams and things like that and stuff I'd like to remember. I'm not gonna expand that just yet. In fact, maybe next week with David when I co-host a webinar with him about this book we've both read called 168 Hours, we're gonna look at this. And we're also gonna look at this dreams and alignment thing. There's certain things. Let me just give a quick zoom into there. There are items in my life that I've been doing for the longest of times now that previously I used to feel a little bit guilty that life was getting out of balance and I wasn't doing and spending enough time with the older daughter or my younger daughter or my wife or the dogs or and life sort of seemed to be unbalanced and you want to balance things again. So there's a bunch of things that you feel you might want to do. And now with this outline. I get to think about, and I've actually scheduled these all. So these things are not stuck here in this 100 dreams and alignment, which we'll talk about next week. They're not stuck there. They've actually been scheduled out into my timeline quite for quite some time. Some pretty exciting things. We'll get into the, the weeds on that maybe next week. Um, but the main idea here is that you get to look at this. Let me jump out to see the larger context. When Saturday comes around, if I feel like looking at these on Saturday, I give them a quick scan. I look at them and then I push them forward to the next Saturday up, which will be over here, Saturday, June the 3rd. And I have this amazing opportunity, as I said, to see them once a week or whatever interval I want to see them at. So there's a concept of backlogs becoming forward logs, anything that you want to reflect on. If you're looking at space repetition where you want to remember things, learn things, you can push them at certain intervals into your timeline and everything streams towards you one day at a time. So we just looked at scheduling the important things, which a lot of people would only like typically what I would do and most people would do. Like I said, we'd, we'd feel a little bit guilty. We'd get to the point of like life doesn't seem balanced. Now let me go and find my areas and my goals section somewhere buried deep in workflow. Now, what is actually going to remind you to go into there? Probably when you're feeling a little bit guilty and when you're feeling like life is getting the better of you, you need to spend more time with the family, then you would go into those outlines and look for them. But now that I have this on my timeline, it's not going to get away from me. I see it up ahead and it streams towards me and I see when I need to see it and I can just take a look at those things, whether it's backlogged items, miscellaneous stuff that I'd like to do in life, reflecting and goals and dreams, et cetera. So we've looked at projects, tasks, reoccurring events and reminders, backlogs, areas. There's more to say about that, but that's as much as we're gonna do for that. Now let's jump to point three and it's actually gonna go very quickly from here on out. That was the major section we did with what stuff you can put on your timeline. Very briefly here, nothing falls through the cracks. As you can see, I don't have any backlog dates. Now, a lot of people ask, don't you have an archive of the stuff you've done? I do, I do journaling. There's many ways to elegantly deal with that. But all I have, if I jump to my homepage, is the next block of time up at 2 p.m. And once I'm done with that, I'm just gonna drag or move maybe two blocks up 
collapse that, and I'm just going to see what I need to see. Maybe one or two hours up ahead. That's all I want to see for now. That's all I want to focus on. Nothing falls through the cracks because all I have is the current hour streaming ahead. And then in my calendar, the next day up, Friday streaming into the next 40 to 60 days, however many days are left from May and June. And so nothing falls through the cracks. Nothing can get misplaced, lost. Everything streams towards you one day at a time. The fourth point to reduce admin. First thing I wanted to say is I don't have an inbox. No inbox. Shocker, right? Most people have an inbox. Now, if you think about it, this timeline doubles up as this amazing, spectacular, flexible inbox. Let me jump into a random outline. Doesn't matter where I am in work, Chloe. Let's say my wife reminds me, Frank, and I totally skipped me. I didn't put into work, Chloe, or whatever. Whatever is bombarding us, whatever is incoming, we all have new reminders, new tasks, new things that proliferate daily, weekly, monthly. So let's say something that I would have just ordinarily put into an inbox, wherever I am in Workflowy, I'm gonna write it out. So I'm gonna take Bia, that's one of our dogs, um, for her vaccine. And let's say that's two days from now, realistically. Well, this is a dummy task anyway, but let's say two days from now, and today's the 25th, let's just say the 27th. Give that a nice pretty color. Don't have to do this, it's not a rule the workflowy timeline, and neither do you need emojis, but I'm going to give it a nice little emoji. Okay, so there is my incoming task reminder, whatever it is, thought. Let me open up my left bar, drag and drop it into the 27th, which is, let me scroll up there, and boom. Now, here's the thing. With this system, you've always got to ask yourself the question, when is the next logical, opportune, or reasonable time to push this task or thing to, this item to? When is the next reasonable time? And I would probably just push it to Friday because I don't want it to sneak up on me on the 27th. So you can already see that I have the 27th, that's the due date. Probably on Friday, I'm gonna drop it into there. Let's jump into Friday. When Friday comes around, I'm gonna be able to take a look at that and see, okay, maybe I need to schedule the vet for the vaccine, a specific schedule for tomorrow and then I'll reschedule it and pop it into Saturday. So you always wanna push something. If you've got a deadline for Friday and you've got a proposal that you need to write, pop it into two days before, let's say Wednesday. Then you know you can, you've got two days. You've got Wednesday, Thursday, and then maybe a bit on Friday morning to time block and maybe do an hour or two each day, get your proposal done. Then by the due date, it's done. So always think of when is the next logical, opportune, or reasonable time. Reasonable because uh, you don't want to overwhelm yourself. You might want to push it a month from now or two weeks from now and look at an opportune time then. And that way, nothing is going to get away from you, let's say. So I don't have an inbox. My timeline is my inbox. If, for instance, I don't want to think too much about a date, I'll just go ahead and pop it into tomorrow's date, Friday the 26th. I'll just pop it in there. And then at the end of today, I'm going to come along and process all these things and pop them into my time slots for the next day. Bada bing, bada boom. Do people even still say that? <laughs> is that something that people say? Bada bing, bada boom. Anyways, so that is one of the things that reduces admin is not having any inbox. And so at the end of today, I'm gonna to process all these things and pop them into time slots. If maybe there's too much to do, I'll take a couple of these things to there, I'm just gonna drag and drop that into the day below or at a next time. So this is the concept of Kanban kicking in where if you have too much on your plate for tomorrow, instead of trying to do the impossible and scheduling into some time block where you know you're not gonna be able to do it, limit your work in progress and push them to the next opportune date in your calendar. So it would just simply look like this. I would push it down to Saturday. All right. One of the other points of reducing admin is the following. Since you have everything on your workflow timeline, if you adopt the system and everything streams towards you one day at a time, nothing's falling through the cracks, right? What is the alternative? You might have them in a consolidated projects outline somewhere in Workflowy, and within the projects outline, you've got the, the tasks and everything. And so you've got to go and take a look at those tasks and, and what you could do is typically tag them 
with a date tag. Before we had the date feature, people used to uh, date tag, make tags out of dates or dates out of tags. And then we had the workflow timestamp feature that came along. Well, you could slap tags or timestamps on everything and filter for everything throughout your, your, your workflow accounts and different projects. And then you can see a sort of consolidated view. Somehow you could get all of that stuff into one consolidated list to do for today. And some people uh, I've coached are perfectly fine with that system. But if you'd like to give this a try, this is one of the things that will happen is that you're going to cut down on admin significantly, literally. Not kidding you. End of the day, two to three minutes max. That's how much time I spend on admin. And so these things stream towards you one day at a time. You deal with them when they come up. And once they're done, you push them back into the next reasonable, opportune, or logical time in your timeline. A lot of people have found this. Once they get to the end of the week, people who have historically done massive or stretches of uh, weekly reviews or planning sessions at the end of the week, typically on a Saturday or Sunday, you set aside an hour, two, three to plan for the week ahead. This is a typical experience of people who've moved from uh, some other kind of system to this timeline system. Suddenly you get to Saturday or Sunday, you find that you've been making micro decisions a step at a time throughout your previous days. And when you get to planning, your usual planning stint on a Saturday or Sunday, you will find that there's nothing left to plan because everything has been pushed to the appropriate time, the opportune time in your calendar. So a lot of people are finding that that eliminates unnecessary admin in the sense of, someone described it to me as this, David Clark, in fact. He said the system has a built-in rolling review. And so, you're making these micro decisions a step at a time. And the review is not something that you set aside for a couple of hours at the end of the week, but it's this rolling thing. So you constantly know where you've come from and where you're heading. All right. So many ways to reduce admin. Um, I like this one. Reduces anxiety. Some people have task overwhelm anxiety. And that's understandable when you cannot get a hold on all the things that life is constantly bombarding you with. You've got them somewhere in Workflowy, or you've got them spread out between Todoist and other apps and calendars and Workflowy itself, but they're all scattered within Workflowy. You've got all beautifully organized lists, but just the admin aspect of getting things into some sort of shape and form that you can look at tomorrow and say, this is my to-do list or my schedule for tomorrow. That creates a lot of anxiety because you're trying to juggle all kinds of things and bring them together. Um, with the workflow timeline, nothing gets away from you. Nothing gets forgotten. Everything streams to you one day at a time, and you only see things when you need to see them. So you get to limit your work in progress. So let's take this typical task over here. Uh, let me take that. This task, take be it for her vaccine. Let's say um, I'm going to pop this in as an example at some random time at 7 p.m., jump to my home screen. So you see my time blocks over here. And at 7 p.m., let me just expand here. You'll see take beer for her vaccine. Let's just say that this was the 26th. I might need to reschedule. Um, life is getting the better of me. I spent too much time on something else. And what can we do? Let's reschedule. Let's pop that into either the next day or maybe a week from now. How about a week from now? Let's do it next Thursday the 1st. That's whew, that's great. That eliminates anxiety in the typical Kanban fashion, where if you've got too much to do, you've got too much on your plate, you've bitten off more than you can chew, push things into the future. What would you typically do with a classic Kanban thing or whatever system you got going is if you weren't able to do it, it would go somewhere into a backlog, and then you might have to fish it out of the backlog. But here, you immediately pop it further down your timeline into the future at a day that is opportune or reasonable or logical. So your things, your tasks don't get away from you. So you're limiting your work in progress and there's no sense of falling behind. Um, you've actively chosen to engage in these items that are streaming towards you. And it's not an exercise in procrastination. If you push things to the future, you're gonna push them to some date that is not gonna sneak up on you and legitimately you feel, wow, I've got a handle on things. I'm not procrastinating. I've postponed this. I'm not procrastinating. All right, that's number five, distractions. It reduces distractions in that I don't need to see things before I need to see them. This is an added trick over here. 
I really don't even need this top outline over here. I could just put them all into one continuous stream of time blocks, but I just want to see what's up next. And some people feel the need to get this 10,000 foot view and see the whole of their workflow and have their life on this dashboard. Here's the thing. While you might be able to have an overview of everything in your life, do you really, really want to do that? It's like this. Imagine, and I'm going to give this illustration in a book that I'm, I'm writing. It'll be ready in about two to three months, the workflow timeline. It'll explain all of this and more. So imagine you, you every morning you want to have breakfast, but your kitchen is a supermarket. It's kind of weird, right? Imagine you have to walk through the supermarket with everything nice and neatly organized by aisles. You've got the, the canned goods, the perishable stuff. You've got um, meat, whatever. Like everything in a supermarket is pretty organized, right? But really all you want is a bowl of oatmeal or a couple of bananas, or maybe you want some bacon and eggs. It's really limited. That's what you want to actually eat. But you don't want to have to walk through the supermarket to get them or to see all the other stuff. And that's what I mean by distractions. If you only have what's up next visually, and I don't feel the need to, to see everything. You see, there's two typical things with the Kanban workflow. You've got uh, two principles that are important. One is to limit your work in progress. And number two is visualize your workflow. If I wanted to visualize my workflow, I could jump to my calendar. But I don't feel the need to visualize absolutely everything in my life that's going on. Everything streams towards me at the time that I need it. So visually, that's real important. All right, that's number six. The important things in life don't get overlooked. I spoke about that briefly where we looked at these things over here. Let me just jump back there to jog your memory. Every Saturday, whenever you want, you can put things along your timeline when you want to see them, they'll stream towards you. So my forward log, the things I want to reflect about and the things that I'm pulling out of uh, dreams and things that I remember from when I was a kid that I want to do again. So I've gotten back into bird watching, for instance, in the last year and a half, but I want to do that with my daughter too. So I'm doing that on Mondays with my daughter, spend some time with her and get to do the thing I love too and teach her about one of the things I love. And that's why I've got this thing alignment. We'll look at that in the next webinar. That's number seven done. And here's an important thing, intuitive way to prioritize. People say to me, Frank, well, can't I just have sort of this tickler file, but not have the time blocks. What's up with these time blocks over here? And I'll, I'll give you a couple of reasons why they're interesting. It all boils down to prioritization. If you're the boss of you and your day is flexible and you've got no fixed events, maybe one or two, maybe nothing, you get to sculpt your day from scratch and do what you feel as you go. You get to go with your passion. You get to go with your gut feel. But you're left with this dilemma because we all have to try and surface and prioritize those things that are the most important. And often the way our day plays out in our minds is very different to the way it plays out in reality. So what a set of time blocks does for you, far from being a rigid, inflexible, hard landscape, concrete thing that you have to do. And if you don't do things at the time that you set, you're a failure at life and you're a failure at your system. Not that. What this is, is it's this giant, not only the time blocks, but the calendar as well. But we're specifically focusing on the time blocks. The timeline is this amazingly flexible Kanban playground where you get to push and pull. If things are getting overwhelming and you've got 20 tasks that have piled up for the end of today and you've only got two hours left, of course, you're not going to do them. Push them, typical Kanban style limit your work in progress, push them back into your timeline to the future. But specifically these time blocks, here's a couple of reasons why you would want to use them. Whatever prioritization techniques, whether you're using the one, three, five, Eisenhower matrix, um, eat that frog, et cetera, et cetera. What you're gonna have to do once you've surfaced your priorities is you're gonna have to ultimately decide when to do them. Now, once I've populated my stuff in my timeline, I might want to then go and reshuffle things and see if it makes sense, for instance. So obviously I'm not gonna schedule an hour, like two blocks of 30 minutes on Thursday at seven or eight, because I'm gonna spend a good couple of hours with my wife. We might go out and have some dinner and whatever. And also I get to look at my day and, and this is more a reflection of reality. What can I take on? How can my day possibly shape up? Am I trying to do too much? If I am, I can pull stuff out. You can see, where your things fit today. And if you've got too many events or items, and then you can get some stuff out so you can focus on the most important things today. Another interesting thing with, with having a set of time blocks, and, and 
sort of planning your stuff to do today according to the cycle of our day. And it doesn't have to be time block by time block, but those just allow you to shift and shuffle and change and pivot to think on your feet and push things to a reasonable time block if things are getting the better of you. Here's the thing. Sometimes I'm tired in the evening. I might not want to write an hour from, I've been getting to bed later these, these last few evenings. And so I'm totally fine to write between 11 p.m. and midnight. Maybe I'm gonna be, um, and, and I'll know on any typical day what my energy levels look like. So I might wanna bring that forward earlier in the day. Some people are too groggy early in the morning and they might not be able to schedule um, knowledge work then or to be creative at that time. So whenever, and then you can look at your day and juxtapose tasks and see, say, does it make sense to move from this to that, getting from point A to B, in my mind's eye, how does it look? Um, do I have enough time for lunch and then to take my daughter to swimming? You can actually juxtapose tasks. And that's important. If you just had this one blob of tasks, it's just a list and you're not able to see spatially where things go, your day might get the better of you. Um, if you do the same thing every day and you don't need time blocks and you've just got into a routine, that's fantastic. But for most people, we need to think on our feet. We need to change and reschedule and not feel like we're behind on stuff. All right. And there's much more to say about prioritization, but we are done.